Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Collinston and welcome to Inspire Creation Surrey School of Sugarcraft. Today I'm going to show you how to work with an airbrush. This is a beginner's class and step by step I'm going to show you some tips and techniques on how to use your airbrush and also how to clean and look after it. So I'll just show you a picture of the project that we're going to be working on. Here's a picture of the project. Now I will also show you how to colour some sugar flowers as well, but the main idea is to see just how the airbrush works. If you would like to join in and work alongside, then here are the items that you need. Uh, if you'd like me to email a copy of this to you, then just email me on hannah at inspiredcreations.uk.com. So here we go. So the first thing to talk about is the different types of airbrushes. You can buy single action and dual action airbrushes. They look the same, but they perform slightly differently. The single action airbrushes such as PME, Cassie Brown are cheaper. They come with a compressor, which has normally one power or it might have a slightly lower power setting as well but the idea is that the compressor which is similar you know this is compressor here um, pumps the air through a valve and out through the nose of the airbrush now on a single action you'll know it is one of those as soon as you turn it on because you'll feel air coming out of the end and then when you depress the button here, that will release, or you pull back on the, the button here, that will release the colour. And depending on how far you pull back the button will depend on how much colour is released, released. You can adjust the single action pressure, or not necessarily the pressure, because that stays the same through the compressor unless it has got a low, medium, high button. You can adjust the air flow um, and therefore the quantity of colour by opening and closing this valve at the back. But I would recommend perhaps not touching that initially because the gun itself, the branch itself, should be calibrated and should be ready to use. Dual action, you have two performances. One um, releases the air, so pressing down will release the air. So when you turn it on, nothing will happen. But when you press down on the button, that will let the air come out, but no colour will come out. And then when you pull the trigger back, that releases the colour. And the more you pull back, the more colour comes out. So you shouldn't have to adjust this at all. So when it comes to um, simple airbrushing, the single action is perfectly fine. The only extra that the dual action will do for you is give you extra control uh, extra close-up detail when you're trying to spray lines and um, you can make speckles with it which I'll show you later um, and some of the compressors this one in particular the Spar Max actually once it's come up to pressure it turns itself onto standby and then it will only turn on and off when it needs to put the air pressure back in um, to the tube and into the airbrush i.e when you're using it So each airbrush in itself, the kits will be different. Um, just showing you how this one's put together. With all of them, you'll have some kind of valve connection which goes in the bottom here. So it might be push on, or this one's a twist on, which is a more secure fit. If it is a push on, then you may as well just leave it on the airbrush. Don't, um, well, at least leave one side on because they, the rubber can weaken and tear. So. But one end gets screwed on to the bottom of the airbrush, screws the rustling. I have actually got a stack of tape on. I think that's important to note. And also wearing a mask, having a very well ventilated room or having some form of a structure fan, which is what I've got here, um, will serve its purpose if you're doing lots of airbrushing. I also wear a mask because it can make your throat feel quite dry. So we turn this on valve onto tightly onto the compressor so that that is ready and then there's that 
a power cable that comes in at the back here. Um, which if I plug this in, I'm just going to move this out of the way slightly. You can then sit that on the floor. You might need to wedge it because sometimes the vibration makes it move. But the idea now, once we've got this plugged in and ready to go, if I turn it on, you can hear that it will um, start working. I haven't got any color in here at the moment. So if I press down, just pressing down, because this is a dual action, the pressing down motion will activate the air and all I can feel is cold air. And if I did have color in, I have to make sure that I keep this uh, little reservoir upright and I push down to release my air and then I pull back as far as I want to to release the color. But it is very, very, very small minor movements that you need and that's what we'll have to get used to with practice. Other useful pieces of equipment, um, a jar. Now this is actually a pot to blow the excess uh, colors into and wash out the airbrush. And it's useful to have something that's enclosed because um, sometimes you do get blowback on the, um, when you dispense the excess color into the, uh, into the pot. So what I've got here is the, it comes with a, a couple of filters which you can put into there and then that just pops on top of the hole. Um, and that means that it will filter out some of the chemicals as it goes through. The airbrush food colors are, they are food safe, but um, they do sometimes or still give off some smell or fine mist, which can make your throat feel uncomfortable. And if you're asthmatic, you need to be particularly careful. So do make sure you have ventilated area. Um, and this piece here just sits in, and that's actually the holder for the airbrush. So this just slots carefully into this hole and you then you've got the holder to hold the rest in. Just make sure when you're storing it, if it's got color in here, that it's upright. Um, so you can see now if I wanted to, I can actually dispense any excess in here, excess fluid in here, but there's nothing in there at the moment. Uh, sometimes the compressors themselves have a holder and you can pop it in there, but the best tip I can give you is just make sure you keep this upright. Often they come with a cap, but the cap, I prefer not to use it because it, you forget it's not, it's not sealed when it's closed and you forget then that you've got liquid in there and it can tip out over your work, which can be very annoying. And the other thing I've got here is a little droplet water bottle, which just allows me to put water into um, the reservoir on the top if I need to clean it through. And we'll talk about cleaning and putting the colour in shortly. The other thing to remember is that you can't keep your compressor on permanently. The single action air brushes, even if you're on high, medium or low air pressure setting, um, you need to only really keep it on for 20 minutes. So I would recommend in between uh, colouring, turn it off. So when you're reloading the colours into the reservoir, you can turn it off and when you're not using it, when it's just in its holder, uh, just keep it switched off and turn it on when you're using it. The dual action air brushes, the ones with the automatic shut off, which is like the Spa Max I've just shown you, they you can use between um, 20 and 40 minutes, just a little bit longer. And of course, um, that would be continuous use. So the fact that it turns itself off in between once it's fully air pressurized um, means that you can use it for much longer. So the types of color that you can use, obviously because you're decorating cakes, everything needs to be food safe. So suitable for food color and color, suitable for food. Um, the ones I prefer most of all are the airbrush color sets one and two from Squire's Kitchen. And the reason for that is because they're much more natural and more kind of, I don't know, if you're trying to do flowers and leaves, it just gives you a much more natural color. There are various other makes which will work as long as it says airbrush 
on it on it it should be absolutely fine you'll find with the pearlized colors and the metallic shades gold bronze silver you need to maybe consider diluting the colors with alcohol and give the bottles a very good shape before you actually squeeze in because any particles will lodge themselves into the airbrush. Uh, these are very good, but you'll find if you buy the white Squires Kitchen or any other white, it's quite thick. So again, you need to dilute with alcohol or rose water. So gin or vodka, schnapps, any clear alcohol or rose water if you prefer not to use alcohol. Um, I have got a worksheet on this course as well and if you've taken the class then that will automatically be emailed to you at the end of your course. The other thing to mention is that the airbrush colours go an awful long way so you don't need to fill up the reservoir on the airbrush, you really only need four or five drops at a time um, to avoid spilling it and to avoid wasting it. Uh, and like I said before, make sure your inkwell is head, held upright during use. Now, the reservoir that we're using on the airbrush is actually described as gravity fed. So it's in the top and the gravity will bring it down um, the airbrush. Something for you to know, um, you've got a needle inside here. And by releasing this part here, by unscrewing this and here, you'll find that you'll be able to pull back the needle. Um, you can even remove it to clean, but I would say just be careful with how much maintenance you do inside. You just need to make sure the needle's clean. You don't want to mess about with anything that's been made or put together in there. Um, the needle itself, all that happens is when you put your color in there, the needle's closed. When you press down to release the air, the needle's still closed. But when you pull back on that, lever the needle is coming back so this lever pulling backwards is actually making the needle pull away from the, the, the nose here and that opens it up you won't be able to see it but the needle you can just see it through here there's a guard around here this unscrews as well but again you don't need to unscrew it um, but as you pull back on the lever you will find that the needle pulls back as well and that releases the color so of course, logic would say, the more you pull the needle back, the more color is going to be allowed to come through. So that's how the needle's not hollow. It's just a solid, big darning needle. Just going back to the colors, you can use these neat or you can actually combine the colors um, to get different shades. And if you know that you're going to want to use that combination of colors again, it's a good idea to play around and get those shades, but then make a note of how many drops you've used of each color and what combination of colors you've used so that you can get that shade again. We will be adding some color into the airbrush shortly, but just to explain that if you put a few drops of color in there and you're combining two or three shades together, then you can give it a shake and that will combine it in the reservoir. The other option is to take a brush and go in there with the, um, the tip here and just mix the two colours together. But of course, that means you're going to take some of that colour onto this brush. So this will need to be washed in between um, whatever you're doing. Before we go ahead and add some colour into the reservoir and start to practice our piping, I wanted to show you this piece of equipment. This is actually um, a moisture um valve and if we put this in between so that hiss is i've turned the air um the compressor off but of course there was some pressure in there and that's what that hiss was now if i put the valve connection on the bottom there so that's where you've got this little pin that pin actually releases any moisture that's been soaked up what this does is as the air brush of the air is going through into the brush, it will take out the moisture that's in the air. So if you have a particularly humid room or environment, or if the weather, if it's pouring down with rain, what you don't want to do is combine more moisture to saturate your color. 
So this moisture trap will take the moisture out, only the moisture um, of the air that's coming through and that way you've got true colour. And the other slide will go on top. Okay, and then when you turn the compressor on, it will load up the pressure. If I wanted to remove the moisture from the valve, then all I do is press. And it's a good idea to put a tissue there as well, and that will collect the moisture. There isn't any in there at the moment because I haven't started working. Also, there is actually a valve you can buy. This one is a screw on valve, but you can buy quick release so that it will come off um, just by pulling a, a section of it up. But don't worry about that for a moment. This, this gauge here will allow me to lower the pressure on the airbrush and it means that the air quantity the pressure that's coming up here is a lot less uh, you can hear it because if i open the valve the air from the compressor will start to bleed out and of course it makes the compressor stay on because it's almost like on a hoover where you've got a little valve that opens and it lets some air out so the suction is not so high uh, but this just lets the air out so not as much comes into the nozzle. So when I press down, the, the, the pressure of air that's coming out of there is a lot, lot less. And this is used for um, controlling the colour volume that's coming out and at what speed. So it's good for making splats and what have you. But again, it's not available on the single action, but it's not, I don't find I use it that much anyway. So I'll just tighten the valve back up and you'll hear the compressor switch off because it's all nice and pressure here. And then that will give me a full pressure coming out. Okay, so now we come to adding some color into the reservoir. So it's important that you have your stand so that you can hold this upright. If not, just be very careful because you mustn't set this down sideways, otherwise it will end up tipping. That's just about okay. The other thing I've done is put my rubber gloves on because I don't want to get the colour on my fingers. It will come off, but it's normally with a couple of hair washes. And I'm just taking any colour because I just want to show you how to practice with this. Um, and I don't use the sea green very often, so it's fine to use. So on the bottle, you've got a couple of arrows. This will be different for uh, different products. And you'll find that other products, have, oh, some of them are quite big containers of colour and you really don't need that much. So whatever you do, don't fill up your reservoir, especially for this session, because you're going to be using lots of different colours, small amounts. So when I press on one of these arrows, one of them is softer than the other, and that's my squeezy. And you'll probably find somewhere around the bottle it is soft and other places around the bottle it's hard. So you want a soft part of the bottle. And if you hold that over there and carefully tip over, and I'm going to put about five drops it can be a little bit hard to um, get out so I'm just going to give it an extra oh see again I've gone too quickly when these bottles are sealed back up if there's wet paint uh, anywhere it does tend to dry and crust so just watch out for that when you open up the bottles you don't want to be too near the reservoir um, because you'll end up um, getting the crumbs into the into the airbrush. So you can see that there isn't a huge amount in there, just about five drops. So the first thing we can do is test the airbrush to check that the colour is actually running freely. And the easiest way to do that, if you're um, on a single action, you will find that you've got, as soon as you've turned it on, you've got air coming out. So all you need to do is press down or pull back. On this one, you have to press down to release the air. And what I want you to do is pull it right back very quickly and then release like so, okay? So you get a little spray. And then instead of pulling it back, just press down to release the air. Or if you're on a single action, just um, it will still be pushing air out. And you just want to run that air across um, the wet color just to check it spidering out. Now, if it's at all claggy, you'll see at this point, and that would mean that maybe you need to uh, loosen the color a little bit with the alcohol or your rose water. Now, of course, 
this is where I should put my extractor fan on, but I'm not going to just so you get a clear sound, uh, but you are hearing the motor of the compressor as we go. So what I want to do now is try out some different techniques. So the first one is to come very close. So if you're on a single action, you're just going to be pulling back. On the dual action, you have to press down to release the air and then just draw back a little bit, just a millimetre, and then keep drawing back and come from very close to the paper. So it's the 90 degree angle. Very close will give you a dot. Keep the pressure the same, don't move back and um, come out to large. And if you pull the lever back a little bit more, just see how the colour releases out. Okay, so when you're really close you, and you pull back just a little bit, you can have really fine lines. This is about as fine as it gets. So when we're doing the outline of the design later, we're going to be hand painting that. Okay, and of course, as you come further away from the paper, so I'm now about five, six inches away, you can see, or seven, yeah, six inches away, you can see that you can get a fine gap. Okay, now the one thing that this uh, dual action does that the others won't is speckles. So I'm just going to show you that before practicing on a piece of colouring in paper. If you simply pull the lever back, so this is on the dual action, not the single action, if you pull the lever back, but don't press down. What that's done is pulled the needle out so it brings some colour in. And then without pulling back, just simply press down, it will give you spatters. So pull back, press down, but be careful when you press down not to pull the lever back at all. And this is ideal for uh, the centres of our daisies later. Um, and it would also give you um, the speckles in some of the flowers. So like the foxglove has got uh, speckles inside. But you can only do this with a, a dual action. This is also where this valve comes in. But again, this valve, if you turn it right down to zero, this is only on the dual action. It does not work on the others. Um, if I pull back and press, it will do the same thing, but the speckles are larger. So if you want, um, to be for flowers or it could be stars. Uh, anyway, speckles, I don't know, it's just something that I wanted to show you. Okay, tightening up my valve so I've got, I'm back to normal now. This little splat, if you have your um, brush vertical, so 90 degrees to the paper, pull so you've got to release the air, but of course, if you're on a single action, it's already going to be releasing. So all you need to do is pull right back and then let go. So all I'm doing is pressing down, pull full back and then come out and stay vertical, but then only press the air and you'll see that you get a nice splat. It's like a starburst. And this is going to come in useful because we're going to do that on our poppies. So I'll just show you that again. 90 degrees to the paper, per perpendicular to the paper. Press down on the dual, but it's already coming through on the single action. Pull right back and then stop, let go. Okay, then immediately in the center, same angle, squirt the air out. So that would be without pulling the flutter back. Okay. Um, on the single action, you'll find that the air is there. So the minute you pull back, if you just stay there, you'll find that it will actually um, give it its splatter. So that's the centre for the poppy. Um, if you simply press and pull back and come away, that is going to be the centre for the daisies later on. OK, so it just gives you a little bit of an idea of how to so while I've still got some colour in my airbrush and once you feel comfortable just play, you can start to practice your piping or your airbrushing skills by maybe finding a colouring book 
I've just printed this A4 off of the internet. I just Googled um, coloring pages and this is by Crayola.com. And to start with, it's gonna feel really strange. Um, so just take a bit of care over what you're doing and just practice um, getting close and far away. So for example, up here, we can do some, we'll do all of this in, in green. It doesn't matter really what color. So I'm about six inches away and I'm gonna start by coloring in what would be the sky. Now I would say as well that an air, a mask is good for this. If you haven't got an extractor fan, you can certainly make a car, you know, make make a little compartment with a cardboard box, and that way everything's contained within that area. Um, I've made a, a little blob on my turtle. So um, following on from the sky, I could come in and do a little bit of detail. So I can turn this around, it's no problem. And I'm going to come in a little bit closer. To start with, you won't know exactly where the airbrush is going to hit. I would say hold the airbrush at about a 45 degree angle. And if you have finer places, then we need to be closer. And if you've got a bigger area, then you need to be further away to get a good coverage. See here, I'm going quite close so you can see that it's not coming in as well. I'm actually holding the lead to the airbrush as well because that's in my way. So if you're getting these lines, you probably want to come out a little bit further. Now this is not going to be perfect, it's going to be like beginner's felt tipping. But it will give you a feel for the control and how close you feel you need to be. Okay, and then you could go to things like in here. And it's very easy to feel like you want to just really quickly do everything, but to start with, it's a good idea not to speed. So here I'm going to colour in a little bit. So I have to come a bit closer because, of course, um, it's a smaller area. And if you remember, I showed you earlier how to splodge. So let's do a splodge on the cherry. So 90 degree angle, press down, pull back and stop. So we're just going to leave that to seep into the paper. This one, though, press down, pull back and then blow only. And you'll get a little little kind of, of stamens, which is quite pretty. Um, if you wanted to practice the fleckles, then remember on, you can only do this on the dual action. You pull back to release some ink and then simply press with the button to get the air to push that excess ink through. And you can see you're getting little spots. And uh, if you want to, you can have a look at coloring something in slightly more detailed. So if we turn it over, I can do the grass. So I've got to come very close here. And so you can't be too precise with this either. So if you try not to be too precise in the first place, then it's got, probably you're going to be happier with the results. So again, right close to get the nails coloured in and so on. So you can practice um, all the skills. The other thing you can do is with the splodge, but if you hold your airbrush, this is for both the single and the job action, if you hold it at a 45 degree angle, press down to let the air out if it's a dual action, if it's a single action that will already come out, pull right back and let go. And then before it seeps into the paper, you can chase that up. On the paper, it dries a lot quicker, but the paper is probably as, ab as absorbent as your cake. So it'll be quite interesting for you to think how that works. 
So I'm not going to colour any more of that in, but certainly colouring in pages are going to be very helpful for you practising your control. So I'm just going to come back to my paper. It's always a good idea to have some paper available just so that you can practise your piping. Now, if you had a cake, you'd probably have it on a turntable and your cake would be up, so you're more um, at a 90 degree angle with this as your surface. Um, I've got a piece of paper here and what I want to do is just practice uh, being quite far away and getting a clean but faded filling in. So this is where we just want a background shade. Nice and neat. That's going to come in handy in a short while. Okay. It's like a mist. So once you've used up all your colour and you're ready to move on to another colour, you can dispense any excess into your jar. So I'm just pressing down to release the air and then back to release the colour. In the single action, you probably only have to press back. So this is empty now. Now, I know that you can actually just go and add a different colour in there, but I do prefer just to have a little bit of water squirted in, give it um, a, a shake and then dispense that water. Okay. And then once you've dispensed that water, you can go ahead and add in your colour. So my first colour that I want to use is red. Um, so I've got a carnival red here and I'm going to use a little bit of the sunrise or sunburst orange as well. So we'll just um, brighten the red up a little bit. And we're going to practice the poppy. So I'm trying to find the soft squidgy part of this um, tub. And I'm doing four to five drops of the carnival red and then I'm going to use maybe two drops of the orange just to brighten it up. Poppies are more vermilion, which is kind of an orangey red. And I can give that a little shake. And we're ready to practice again. OK, so pressing down to release the air or on a single action, it will already release the air and you trigger back. To release the colour and just let that go through until you're happy with the shade. So the green's all gone through and this is starting to um, starting to uh, look the right colour. Now what I'm going to do now is show you how to make some handmade stencils. So we just need a piece of A4 and I'll first of all I'm going to make the stencil for the poppy. So I'm going to tear in a hole. If I fold this just a little bit and tear in a hole. I don't want to make it too big because otherwise it's going to be massive for the um, cake. And I've only got a six inch cake. So the idea here is just to pull out um, a circle, a rough circle. And you can see just by doing that, I've actually given myself some extra petals, but I feel like I want to just pull a little bit more off of there. So it looks like a cloud almost. OK, that's one. That's going to be your stencil for the poppy. And the other one is sky. So I'm going to take an A4 piece of paper, hold it landscape, and then just tear out a jagged bit so it goes up and down just so you've got some interest. I'll get down a little bit more there and possibly here. So it's just a ripped piece of paper. I'll show you how to, how to do that. So I've got a little bit of sugar paste here. Sugar paste is better than flour paste because it's slightly more tacky with the fat content. And we're gonna take a small ball of that paste, warm it up in your hand, and without any water or glue, I'm gonna pop that onto my surface. And it's just off center. Go back to put my gloves on. 
one thing I don't like is actually getting the paint, not only not getting the paint on my hands, but I really don't like um, the coldness of the air. Um, so you'll see now the difference as I do this. So you can start at the back again. So start off on the paper so that you've got control. Then a sweeping action backwards and forwards. Coming closer. Or not closer, but adding more colour to the front. Okay, so once I've done that, I can just peel that off. Okay, so that's this one. Now, the next step, we keep this on. And what we want to do is outline the poppy. And we're going to outline a daisy. Now, I'm showing you this. And the idea is that you practice on your paper before you start on your cake. So this time I've got the dynamic black and it's just going to be careful of the dry colour. You only need to get about two drops in here because that will do you the whole cake probably. And I've got a nice fine brush. Now while this poppy is drying, I'm going to show you just how I've created the daisy. And all I've done there is simply drawn leaf shaped petals. Okay, if you imagine you've got a centre in there. I just load up the brush so that you've got enough colour on there. And try not to be too precise because that's where it kind of upsets it if you try and be too exact. OK, and like we did with the poppy, I want to block out, I'm just taking my gloves off, the centre. And that will be ready for later on. OK, so we're just going to pop a little blob in the middle. Just make sure it sticks a little bit because I'll just warm that up a bit more, get the fat going. Get the fat melting. There we go. It's just when you airbrush it, sometimes it will fly off. So by blocking out the centres for the poppy and the daisy, it means that when you do the background green and yellow, uh, green and blue, it doesn't um, cause you so much of a problem. So having done that one, just to practice, I'm just going to show you now how to create the outlines for the poppy here because that's a bit dry now. And you've got to visualise where the poppies will, poppy petal outer parts will be. Um, they're kind of rounded. So this is a bit abstract. So if you keep it light and not too detailed, just a little bit of a wobbly line around the outside and just an illusion that there's an edge to the petal. And then you can come back in maybe and draw some vein lines, which is well, they are quite heavily textured. Oops, that's a very deep one, so not as good. But you can see already it looks better than this one here. So if I was, if I wanted to here, I could actually um, use the colour in again. Just try and work out where the four. I normally put four petals in, but it doesn't look as good because it's already coloured in in the middle. I like the idea of having colours on top, but a bit of white showing and so on. OK. So when this is dry, what we would do is peel this off and we would do our splodge. So we're going to leave this for the moment and move on to our cake and do the poppies on the cake. Um, so you can see how that works. OK, so I've got a little mini turntable here, which is very useful. You don't have to have it. Um, I've pre-iced the cake. I've iced it in white because that way then we can um, add the colour with the airbrush. And the idea is that we colour with the airbrush the whole thing. 
Okay, so I haven't really iced it that well, but it will give it, it give us the um, idea of what we're trying to do. I put the tissue on there so that the turntable doesn't get filthy. You could cling film line if you want to. And then I've got my sugar paste. I just want to use um, this instead of flour paste. And I want to warm it up between my hands. That way it uh, will stick a little bit better. So you don't want any glue. This just needs to be added in where you'd like your poppies to be. And just try and get this warm up, warmed up enough so it, it will hold without anything, um, any sticky. Make sure your hands are clean when you do this so that you don't transfer color onto the paste and in turn onto your um, cake. <laughs> Having a little bit of trouble getting this to stick. Let's try again. As long as it will hold tightly enough for you to be able to airbrush over, then you're okay. Now, um, the low, this will be a big one. I'm going to put a big one here, but you just be careful because you, you want different sizes. You don't want this center to be too huge. So you can put one up here. That one's likely to stick a bit more easily. And um, you might want a daisy. So that's possibly going to be a daisy, actually. So we'll leave that one there. And I'll do one more down here. Of course, you're going to decorate the whole cake, um, but I'm just going to show you a sample. So that one can go on there. Oh, it's being warmed up a little bit more. Because my hands are sticky. Okay. So now we've um, got those centers blocked, we can go ahead and airbrush the red. Remember to wear your mask and have every, everywhere ventilated while you do this. Just going to check that I've got some red in there, which I haven't, so let's just add some red coloring. So remember we're going to use the carnival red find the soft spot on the um, pot and get that dropped in. Try and drop it down to the center, the base so that it's not caught on the side and wasted. And we'll get some of the orange as well. This is the sunset orange. So four, maybe five drops of the red combined with maybe three drops of the orange. You, you can decide how you do this. Okay, I'm just going to give that a little bit of a shake to combine the colours. Okay, so if you remember, we've torn out our template and we've practiced on your piece of paper. So now we need to position this just off centre to the piece of paste that you've stuck. And we want to uh, airbrush the airbrush is stuck so I'll just unstick it there we go and just unstick it from the holder so I want the centre to be uh, off centre and we do need to be a little bit careful here spray onto the paper first and if you remember we were doing a, a dark uh, more strong red down the bottom. Be careful not to get it too wet. You might decide to do this in two goes, but of course that makes it very difficult getting the stencil back on in the same place. It can look a bit drunk. So maybe try and get this working straight away. And then when you're finished, you can carefully remove. It's caught it a little bit on there, but I'm not too worried. Okay. So that's one. And then this one's going to be a daisy. And up here, got a little bit of red yet left, but I'm going to run out of red. So I need to add a little bit more color. Okay, so I've added a little bit more color, orange and red. And then I'm going to position 
the template. You have to watch out that you don't get any red underneath as well. So try and get that um, held as best you can. But remember, your sugar paste is soft, so you don't want to make a dink. When it starts to look wet like this, you need to stop because you'll melt the paste. Okay. And, you know, from our point of view, we don't want anything too precise because uh, it makes it, it makes it so easy to get it wrong. So the next step would be to paint the petals of the daisy, if you remember. So the petals are painted and the outline for the poppy are painted by hand because the airbrush, you're going to get it everywhere. It's not going to work. So steady hand, get the colour onto the brush. And as you get the colour onto the brush, twist the brush onto the palette. And that should make it come to a point. And try not to be too precise. Um, as I mentioned earlier, using your plug of paste as your centre guide, start to paint the petals for the daisy. Now, again, do not worry if this is not perfect. If you are concerned, I would always say practice on a piece of paper or an ice board first before you go ahead and work on the actual cake. So I'm just going to feel like I want to just bring that in there a little bit. Okay. And on here as well, the daisies have got texture, so it's quite nice to run some lines. I'm just literally drawing through with the brush. I'm not trying to place and draw a line. I'm just sweeping the tip and how it comes out is how it comes out. OK. Um, try not to be too precise. Uh, there's no way of getting this off once it's on. So it is, there's a bit of pressure there. Okay. Then we go back to the original puppy, which might just be okay to do. And if you remember from the practice, um, if you find that it you starts to bleed, then stop and let it dry. So one, two. identify the edge of the petal first before you go ahead. And we can draw the texture lines in as well. This is um, a bit of an abstract. We know it's a poppy, but it's not botanically correct. Take care when you change the angle of your brush because it can, without you realizing, make you get thicker lines. So that's that poppy there. And then this one here. I like to hold on to my hand as well, just so that I've got control. And if you draw in the edges of the front petals first, it makes sense because the side petals are likely to be behind. So we do the side petals next. And then finish off by doing that back petal, which wouldn't have sides. And then we can draw in our vein lines. It stands to reason as well, if anything, it's going to be paler towards the back. And if you're doing a whole set of poppies as, as your base, then the smaller ones can be in the background and they will be paler. Don't overpaint either because it can sometimes lift. So we would keep the center plugs um, until we've actually completed the design now. I'm just going to do another copy and another daisy, and this one. 
I folded the paper so that it's coming over the board a little bit so we'll see how that comes out. And I've also got my hair on so I'm extracting the air. And I'm going to make um, the petals. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to try it, but I quite like the idea of being able to have petals that hang uh, a little bit like, I'm trying to think, echinacea style. But of course, this is more difficult. So don't try this if it's your first time. So bigger. Echinacea are more straggly, but they've got a kind of they've got hangy bit. I feel like I want to push this up just a little bit. There we go. Now it's better. Um, I don't really want to mess about with this too much. It's like a fallen daisy. So this would be the back petals, which you can't see, so they're kind of triangular. I feel like I'm making this a mess now, so we'll, we'll hope. <laughs> it's because the centre's in the way. Bit of a floppy, floppy daisy. Oops. Let's see if we can. There we go. Push that up just a little bit. So you can see this is much, much harder. I'm finding it much harder. We'll come back to this poppy. It's a little bit on the wet side, so I just do need to be careful. If it starts to bleed, I will stop. And I've got to visualize where the edges of that front petal are. And do the side ones next. even if you touch it in just some areas this is going to be the little back petal which you can barely see if it helps you could if you've got a tilting turntable perfect because you can tilt that up or pop something underneath so that you've got more control and try and anchor your brush by stabilizing maybe using a little finger like i am here just don't worry too much if it kind of goes wrong don't because um you know you are new to this and it is it, it definitely is all about the practice there's no question about that okay so we've got those pieces in so the centers will stay and we're going to move on to sky So as before, we can dispense of all the red. It's all gone. I'm just going to use some just tap water to help dispense the majority of the red, but you'll notice I haven't had to clean it really. Until that's gone all the way through. And I'm going to use electric blue. So find the soft spot, be careful, turn it over once you get to the reservoir to fill. I'm going to put about five drops in there because we've got sky to cover. And you could go all the way around, but I'm only doing part of the cake. So I'm only going to concentrate in this, this area here. 
Now, less is more because we don't want to put too much color on here. It's nice if you have a little bit of white. So if you remember, we had ripped a piece of paper to, so it had a wobbly edge, which is here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold that over my cake spray and then gradually bring the paper down which will mean that we're going to have some white areas left as well and they can resemble clouds so we just want to make sure that we've got the color come through as the right shape because before it was red so if you notice I really went too hard then so I need to adjust my pull back on here to make sure that it's not too much I definitely want some white spaces on here so we'll start off and again you don't want to spray over your poppy either so either cover that up or avoid it so i'm going to avoid it now because um it's very difficult it's unusual to do the foreground first uh, but it's important that you do, otherwise everything is going to be sprayed over blue, which will go green or brown. So you can see just by having this ripped part here and only focusing on certain areas, you can start to get this cloud effect. So I'm just spraying up against that bottom edge here. That's my aim. I'm not trying to cover the whole cake. You could do. Hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do here. Nice bit of clouds. Okay, remember that some of this area is going to be dwarfed as well. So come in here, a little bit of blue. Okay, and remember with the dual action, you press the air down, you press down to get your air, and then you pull back to get your color. Whereas with the single action, you only have to pull back, that is um, the one that benefits. It's an easier airbrush to work with, but maybe not as refined, but perfectly adequate for um, cake decoration. Or if you go over some of the daisies with blue, it gives it some interest. You can see now we've got some clouds. Okay, some white spaces as well as some dark spaces or blue spaces. And if you do end up with a lot of the colour left, then you could practice with it on a piece of paper, but I'm just going to dispense the blue now. And I'm not going to worry too much about cleaning this because the green, well, green, green and yellow make blue, but I want um, quite a nice green. So I'm going to use jungle green, but I'm going to add in some yellow. So we're going to add um, a few drops of green. This is the jungle green. And a couple of drops of yellow to make it brighter. So more liney, more spring green. Give that a little shake around so that the greens combine and then test it on a piece of paper make sure it's the shade you want now with this as well i'm going to continue using the cloud rich piece of paper because i think that's just going to help me guard some of this and we just want to add little areas, but try not to over 
spray the poppies if you can help it. And leave some white spaces. It doesn't matter if the, the green goes over the blue a little bit, that's fine. But just don't try and colour the whole thing in because it doesn't give it enough interest otherwise. I'm just shielding where I can. So just imagine them as little clouds again. A light guard, that's all you need. This is probably blocking your view completely now. I feel like I need to do something here as well. Colouring in areas, some darker than others. I feel like I want to get rid of it. It's starting to look a little bit like a picture now. Okay, so I've brought my practice paper back in and I'm going to peel off the paste that was covering the daisy. And what I've got here is yellow. So I've cleaned out my green and I've got my yellow. So we'll just test the yellow, make sure it's coming through yellow. And the idea here is to hold the piping, uh, hold the uh, airbrush pen vertically so it's perpendicular so 90 degrees to the surface of the paper and you want to push down all your air is coming out and then pull back so you get a full splodge rounded splodge of yellow and that's all we want to do at this stage so we just press down to get the air to come out pull full throttle back and then um, let it go onto the paper don't worry if it's a little bit splodgy Okay, so you want to practice that a few times on the paper before you go ahead onto your cake. So bringing my cake back in, we need to be very careful and peel off the little pieces of paste. If you find that there's excess sugar paste, we're going to need to carefully take that off as well. And this is why uh, you don't really want to glue it on because it doesn't come off very cleanly if it's wet. So that must have got a little bit damp. I'm hoping this one will pick off a little bit more easily. If you're careful, then you should find it will come off straight away. And then just use a knife or your nails to scrape off the excess. Okay, leave the poppy ones on at this stage. And then you're ready to go ahead and do your pull black back on your um, airbrush. So try and have this so that it is going to be 90 degree angle. Just going to turn this light down a little bit. That might help the focus. There we go. So the idea here is to hold this 90 degrees. Um, if you're a single action, the air will be coming out already and all you need to do is pull back once and release straight away. With this one, I have to press first, pull back and then uh, it will dispense the yellow. So that's one. And then I need to do the same. Oops, be careful you don't tip your uh, ink reservoir over. So 90 degree angle to the cake. Pull back, release. So 
to get the yellow in. Now, if you want to, you can um, use a little bit of this yellow in places. And that just brightens up the green. We don't want to close all the white spaces up, but you may just decide while well, you've got the yellow there to use some of it up around your creation. And then dispense of the yellow. Well, you've only put a few drops in, so you should be absolutely fine. And not too much wastage. Check that it's clear. And then we're going to go in with the dynamic black. Now the black, we're going to do the two splats for the poppies or the three splats actually, because we've got three poppies on here. There is color in there, but for some reason it's not coming out. I'm just going to fix that. Oh, there we go. Whoops. I think I need to wipe that dry. Again, when it dries, it can go a bit crumbly. So I had about four drips come out of that. We can always add more. We just don't want to throw a lot of it away. And just make sure you keep cleaning your hands with some kitchen towel as you go because it can make things a bit mucky. Now I would probably recommend rather than picking these centers off with your hand if you get in very carefully with a knife that's probably going to be a cleaner way of getting this off um, and if you've got excess you can gently scratch that away. You can see already it looks quite nice the center so we'll do the same on this one. Careful not to scrape the whole design and then we'll do the one on the top as well. Gently itch. Try and lift it in one piece cleanly away. Okay, and then we're ready to do our splodges. So if you remember, I'll just move the cake out of the way. I'll just show you on the paper again. Move that completely out of the way because I'm a bit concerned about that getting caught with the colour. We can just ease off the centre, take away any excess that's attached. And then practice. So this time again, you're perpendicular to the paper. So the the airbrush itself is vertical, your paper is horizontal. So pressing down, pull back, and then blow. Okay, so we've got one here. So pressing down, pull back, blow. So if you're on a single action, the air is already coming through. So all you need to do is pull back and let go. This one, I have to press down to get the air, pull back, and then blow. And that will give me my poppy pattern. So bringing the cake back in on the turntable. Move this out of the way momentarily. It's quite a heart in the mouth moment doing this bit. Because of course you do not know how this is going to come out. And I'm thinking possibly I want to raise the angle of this slightly. Is there anything you've got that you don't mind getting a bit of airbrush paint on? Okay, so I'm just going to hold the airbrush 90 degree angle, press down, pull back and let go and blow. What I really like here is the fact that I haven't gone exactly central. And we're going to do the same on this one. So 90 degree angle to the cake, press down to release the air, pull back 
and let go and then blow. Give me these lovely rain lines. And we'll do the same on the top one. So this time we've got to change the angle. And if you're slightly off center, that's great because it's just going to give you some white as a, an interest highlight. Press down to get the air out, pull back and blow. The closer you are, the more you'll blow the, the pattern off. OK, so I'll just move the cake to one side for a moment because I want to show you how to make the speckles. And if we bring the paper in. This is the process that you can't do if you have, have a single action. So the idea here is to pull back the trigger and simply press. And what that does is gives you these little speckles. OK, and if you have one of these pressure release valves, you can take it down to minimum and pull back and press and it will give you more dots, less spray. Okay, and the idea is we just want to bring that over the daisy center and speckle. Okay, I'll just turn that off for a moment, but I will probably use that pressure wise uh, another time. I won't use it because I know most of you won't have access to that. So if you've only got a single action uh, airbrush, that's okay. You just do this bit by hand using a brush in the paints like you did before. So remember, release the trigger backwards and press, but don't try and do this if you haven't got a dual action. So trigger back and press, press. Okay, and I do quite like this effect and it's quite nice to have a bit of this all around. Just to give it some more interest. Then try not to be try not to do too much with it because it can overpower the design. Now the last thing I want to show you is where you can actually take little flecks out using a sharp knife, a clean sharp knife. And all you need to do is push the knife blade in. I've got the knife blade upside down. It makes it easier for some reason. Take these pieces out cleanly though. So if you have got a blemish and you know you want some little white flecks, you can push those, or cut those or break those out from the areas that you're not overly pleased with. Um, so just random, nothing too precise. And with a clean brush, we can take off the excess. So these could be little stars. So I've just got to make sure that wherever I brush this off from, that it is in fact dry. Otherwise, we're going to transfer the colour where we don't want it. Let's take the excess again. Wait till the brush. Wait till it's dry before you try and lift all of this. So that's the flex. And then the final thing is to use some white petal dust or some pearlized white petal dust mixed with alcohol and that will give you some finer flex and I'm going to do that now. So all I've got here is some pearl white petal dust and a little bit of white alcohol or you can use rose water. And I'm just going to mix those two colours together or so the colours, the alcohol and the, pet, the, the pearl white dust, or you can use white dust. You could even use um, Trex melted white fat. Okay, 
and then we bring our piece back in now this will go everywhere so i'm only going to do a little bit but just to show you that you can um press or bang the brush against your finger and that will flick the white onto the cake again don't overdo it and it doesn't want to be too wet because otherwise it will melt little holes into your paste but this just gives it some highlight interest you could if you wanted to stipple but i find that's not overly effective it just kind of wets it but it does go everywhere <laughs> Okay, and there you have your start of your floral design. And clearly I do that all the way around. I've just got um, that on one side. It's quite effective. Lots of different techniques for you to try. And I'm just going to go through in a moment how you dust a petal or how you colour a petal using airbrush colours. Okay, so I've cleaned the black out of my uh, reservoir and I've put in some jazz blue. And now I'm just adding in a couple of drops of pop pink. And I'm gonna give the reservoir a bit of a shake so that those two colors combine and we make ourselves a purple. And this is where you can really start to play around with your colors. So for colouring sugar flowers, they are better when they're dry, but you can colour them wet as well. Um, so we're going to just test out. That's fine. It's going kind of bluey purple shade, which is what I want. This is a Lysianthus flower, and it's with quite old petals that I've had for a while, and they've faded, but they're good for practice. So the idea here is that we want the top edge uh purpley blue and the bottom edge whoops lime green so with my thumb i'm actually going to mask over the area that i don't want to color start off with a test on your paper and then try start to catch the edge now try really hard not to be close uh, to the flower petal and when you're doing this, you need to be conservative because otherwise it's going to end up getting too wet and it'll melt the paste. So take your time. You'll probably find that you use a lot more colour because most of it's going off the edge of the petal. But Lysianthus, they're, they're nicely toned at the top edge, but there's not so much colour in the center and then it goes down to the um, lime green shade. If I bring that away, you can see what's happened. Okay. And then equally, we do the same on the back. Now, it's probably also a very good idea to take away the, um, the petals that you're not coloring. I've got these right by me, but I would bring these in one by one. And certainly you want to let the airbrush color dry before you add more, if, especially if it's super wet. Okay, so you can see the difference between that one and an uncolored one. Just gonna move this one out of the way now. And we'll just show you tip here so again we can semi mask that bottom part which wants to be green start off your color get your pressure right and your pull back right and then catch it from the top edge but try very hard not to go close with the airbrush it's, it's very tempting because you think nothing's coming out or nothing's affecting it and also you, there's a temptation to pull back more as well. And you just need to be patient with this. So we're just turning this around, but I'm trying to mask the area that I want to be lime green. 
it's the best and quickest way to colour flowers and I absolutely love it. Okay. Um, now, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to colour another one for you just so you can see. Um, you don't need to see me assemble these. It's just as a bit of a guide generally. And the practice, it comes, the, the colouring will come with practice. And the most important thing, as I say, is not to have the throttle pulled back too much. Always colour from the outside edge in. And don't come too close. Okay, and if it starts to get wet, then you need to leave it to dry before you carry on. But always work off the edge and in, but at a distance, three, four inches. Try and stay patient. And then once they're dry, so after about half an hour or so, you'll be clear to put them together without them sticking. And you can steam the flower, that's fine, it won't have an impact. If you feel like the colour's not coming out, pull back just a little bit, but only a little bit. It's a lot of control goes into colouring the flowers. It's so easy to over pull back. Okay, so I'm just going to clean out my colour and put the lime green shade, which would be the jungle green with the yellow. And then I'll show you the base of the petal and then we're, um, I'll show you how to clean your, um, clean the gear down, clean your airbrush down. Okay, so I put my jungle green and my yellow in here. Just going to test, make sure it's coming out how I want it to. And then we can go ahead and colour the edge. Now, it's very difficult to shield this. So I can only really suggest that you pop, um, you could put a piece of paper over it, but if you just mask it a little bit with your hand, come from the, the bottom up. It's a bit like when you do your dusting normally, you would dust from the base up or the edge in. Because we want it darker on the base. It's not intentional that I'm colouring the wire, but it does happen to be colouring it as well. Okay, so that's giving me that subtle green hint. So you've got this nice variation. Um, and again, you would do something on the back. So. Uh, I'll just show you on this one because that one's got blue on both sides. So hold it gently in your hand, start the base, don't come too close. It does go a little bit paler when, when it's dry. So make sure the colour's right before you start as well. And then we can work on the back again, masking the area that you don't really want to touch. You don't want to to press anything down on it because it will give you a line but just by roughly masking it, it's just sheltering the area a little bit so it gives you um, what you want okay you could go back over that a little bit so it's looking a little bit on the yellow, uh, the green side so I'm thinking maybe I should um, go back over with a light so you put more yellow in the green but you can do that so this one, I'm just going to take advantage of the fact that I can put it down and shield the top while I just add in some yellow. Oh, it's not yellow, it's lime green. Lime green. Okay, and that gives you the subtle shading. So this works perfectly for strongly coloured flowers like poppies. It will work brilliantly for oak leaves and acorns. Um, and it will also, you'll be able to colour 
things that have speckles on like foxglove. So it will work for any, um, any plant, any flower. All right, it's just you need to have control and know what you're doing. So that's how um, I colour my flowers, let them dry, and then you can go ahead and assemble them in the usual way. Now, um, one of the last things I want to talk through is how to clean your airbrush. So the first thing is you need to dispense the colour, the excess colour. So just go ahead and tip that, get that tipped into your jar. Fuming. Okay, again, remember ventilation, a mask, gloves. So this now I can give uh, a fair bit of um, water, so probably half fill the water with water, the reservoir with water. And I'm using a fat brush without scratching. I'm just getting the brush down the bottom very gently between the areas where the needle is. You can see when you look down into the reservoir where the needle is. And I can also encourage this to clean in here. What you do there is fold up a piece of tissue. Be careful you don't stuff too much of it into the nozzle because that's where uh, the needle is. And if you press down and pull back, what it's going to do is pull the needle out of the way. And because you've closed up the needle end, uh, the water flushes back into the reservoir. And what that's doing is actually cleaning this part here. So again, we can dispense into the jar. What I would recommend you don't do is dispense into an open jar, maybe cover it up so that it's not going to splash out. And the worst thing you could do is actually dispense this into a sink because it will just ping against the stainless steel. It will ping against the sink. It will make an awful mess everywhere. Um, yeah, it's not going to be pretty. So that's starting to look a little bit clean now. So I can pour more water in there. We'll go back in with the brush and just very carefully try and choose a brush that won't lose its hairs. Ideally, you don't want um, hair stuck in there. Okay. Now you can get airbrush cleaner as well, which I would recommend after you've worked with the colours that will um, clean it nicely for you. So pressing down the air comes out, pull back. So on a single action you just need to pull back. Okay, so you can see that's flushed back and it's actually dirty water now. Quite interesting. Go back in with the brush a little bit, and that's just helping get the remains out. You must make sure your brush is clean before you store it, and you store it out of the box um, so that it can uh, dry naturally. You really don't want to leave any liquid in here because it will rust. I'm just cleaning up. Just get the excess, keep it nice. I'll just run, just run some air through there just to help it dry out a little bit. There's nothing coming out other than air now. Okay. If for some reason your airbrush is clogged, then you can uh, take it off the compressor and then you can unscrew this part here. And like a ballpoint pen, there's another uh, piece inside that you can unscrew and your needle will then pull back and you can even pull the needle out to clean it. So if you feel like it's really not cleaning up nicely by doing what I've shown you, then you can um, give it an extra clean or unblock it by um, unscrewing the back. 
but I'm not going to show that because I think it's not really that necessary unless something's wrong. Be careful as well because the needle's in here. So if you are blotting or cleaning, um, just be really careful just to gently push some tissue in there to dry it out. So I'm going to turn my machine off now. And actually, let's just, if I press this button here to depress, that will take the liquid out. In fact, let me turn the machine back on again, let it pressurise, because there is a little bit of liquid in here. And then if I press that in, that will splash out. It's just a, by pushing it up, it makes a, the hole bigger. And then you can soak up the moisture. It dries itself out anyway. And then we're ready to uh, detach. Turn your machine off before you do this. And if you've got single action, you're probably all right leaving it all attached, but leave that out of the box to dry overnight. OK, so um, I hope that has been useful for you and um, feel free to email me with any questions. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm just going to put my cake back in so you can see. One more view of the finished piece that we've made. Take it off the tissue. Just be careful not to handle the paste because it is still soft. So happy airbrushing and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.